You are listening to the Cycling Podcast at the Tour de France, brought to you by iWoka, flexible loans built for small businesses, iwoka.co.uk. Today we're in Orsier Merlet. Where are we, Lionel? We are in the middle of a disco by the sounds well, of things. <laughs> we're at Orsier Merlet, which feels a little bit like uh, the party at university that no one's turned up to, but the music is still blasting out of the front room a little, doesn't it? Are you still still hurting about that, Lionel? <laughs> well, I didn't go to university, Richard, actually, so it was a, it was a theoretical <laughs> oh, uh, anecdote, that. You no, know, I went to the school of hard knocks, as you know, <laughs> Rich. <laughs> um, the disco is playing out over the, the skate park, and the music is drifting across the whole of Orsier Merlet, isn't it? And we're and outside. Lit- but literally nobody is standing in front of the stage. No. Uh, where the DJs and stuff. So it no. feels a bit unnecessary. Mm. I'm There's sure you can rush co- over later. Well, we're going yeah, yeah, to ask nothing to, do with to co- go and tell him to turn it, turn it down yeah, a bit. Yeah, it has nothing to do with COVID, uh, mind you, you know. It's just that everybody's gone down the mountain already except us, I guess. So Orsi and Merlet were probably pre- gearing up for a great party tonight on the Tour de France. I think yeah. he's building up to introducing Bernard Teveney as a, a <laughs> legend of this mountain, of course. Well, I, I guess the party was given in his honour, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's why no one's turned up. <laughs> That's why nobody turned up. Yeah, I, I, I have a scoop for you, uh, dear listeners. Uh, actually, I n- now know why nobody was uh, asking questions to Bernard Teveney yesterday about his win in Orsia Merlet. For, as I s- said on Twitter to all my you know, followers there... Um, I don't know. I suppose. I suppose you, you know that we tasted Bandol uh, yesterday, and I, I told you the story that Bandol in the old days, you, uh, you know, that there, there were mushrooms on, on in the Bandol crop, and that uh, that the, that wine was was giving you uh, hallucinations. So obviously, uh, under the influence of Bandol yesterday, I I don't know what happened uh, to my mind because I, I've written and read lots of stories about uh, you know Orsia Merlet and uh, uh, Luis Ocaña, which I w- watch on TV, and Stephen Rooks, which I actually was there the day he, he won that time trial and but I don't know why all of a sudden that image of Bernard Tevney in his Peugeot jersey you know riding solo up the climb to Orsia Merlet came from nowhere probably you, you must from, have dreamt it from a parallel universe or something so for once I must uh, say I really that that was real bullshit well I, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean it's the first the first time you featured in Corrections Corner well he's sitting over there Francois. on his own in Corrections <laughs> yeah, Corner yeah. actually literally well, in I, the I, corner well, I had a sleepless night last night because I said <laughs> when we were talking about Caleb Ewan and the, the, the supermarket queues that he went through the six items or less oh. till six items or fewer yeah and I I, 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 I str- you know I had a restless night as a result of that yeah well I'll tell you what I didn't have a restless night because one of the advantage of old age on top of mental confusion is is that you you, you don't feel as ashamed 20 years ago with you know uh, uh, fake news like this one I wouldn't have slept for a couple of days you know out of shame but well I, I slept well so I suppose you know <laughs> <laughs> I suppose as I said in parallel universe I'm sure Bernard Tevney won in Orsia Mallet but he didn't today, that's for sure. Well, it's like the Tour de France itself. We have to make up for our mistakes as the race unfolds. We can't look back and regret what we've got wrong. We've just got to keep ploughing on towards Paris, haven't we, like the riders? Every day is a new day, and today was an uphill finish. First one of this tour, very early on, Cyril Guimar, the legendary French DS, former rider, dismissed this climb as, as insignificant, not very hard. Beautiful road surface. It's not the toughest, and it did come so early in the race that you sense the, 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 the main riders were kind of, you know, keeping their cards pretty close to their chest, but it was almost as if Jumbo Visma couldn't help themselves. I mean, they've got three riders in absolutely incredible form, Wout van Aert, Sepp Kuss, and Primoz Roglic, and it almost looked as if they didn't really want to win, and, and, and they did by default because, in the end, Roglic was just the strongest rider there. Yeah, and don't forget Robert, uh, Robert Hessing, who was a leader in his own right, uh, you know, only five or six years ago, won, well, quite a few races, and now he's the road captain for, uh, you know, 
Tim Jumovic in many ways, and he, he, he was the one, you know, early in the climb who set the pace. He, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's obviously surrendered his role as a as a team leader. He's, he's too old for that now. But he's, uh, you could tell at the end uh, of the stage, I, I saw him pass, tried to talk to him. You could see the contented look on his face of, you know, uh, duty, well done. And uh, yeah, I mean, all of them are impressive. And every one of them in their own uh, role. And, and one of the most impressive of the lot is Wout van Aert. Was indeed. Well, the, the other thing about the day that was notable, stage four from Sisteron to Orsier Merlet, as you say, Richard, the first summit finish of the tour, was that there was a Slovenian 1-2 with Primoz Roglic winning the stage ahead of Tade Pogacar. Wout van Aert was the climber of the day, wasn't he? I mean, we, we bumped into our Belgian colleague uh, Hugo Kurovic, uh, Francois, I think he said to you, finally, Belgium has a world-class climber. Yeah. And uh, he showed it today. He was incredibly strong for a much longer than I thought, which perhaps, you know, not the most difficult climb, I, t I grant you. But it was still a very good turn from Van Aert. And when Van Aert pulled off the front, it kind of left a vacuum that Team Ineos Grenadiers really didn't want to fill. Uh, Michal Kwiatkowski sort of looked around to see what was what and then Sepp Kuss of Jumbo Visma came and did another you know equally intense turn and that set up the finish for Roglic Pogacar looked good as well and um, must mention Guillaume Martin who was uh, riding extremely well for Cofidis he he made the first real attempt to try and win the stage and then when he was captured went again and ended up third on the stage behind Roglic and Pogacar. Before well, Lionel, can I just interrupt you there? Because I was standing with 400 metres to go and it was just at the spot where uh, Martin launched one of his attacks. And I, I, I wanted, this is a strange tour, there aren't so many people there, but there was a there, were, there was a sprinkling of people there on the climb. So I went and stood with them 400 metres to go just to get a, a good view of the race. And this is what it sounded like. <laughs> Well, before that, it was a fairly normal Tour de France stage, wasn't it? There was a break of six riders who went straight from the start. Niels Pollitt and Chris Nylans of the Israel Startup Nation were in there. Mathieu Bergadeau of Total Direct Energy. Francois Howe is the pronunciation on the surname there. Any good? No, yeah, well, not great, but, you know, <laughs> he's a young rider. He shouldn't have done it. I think he's one of the youngest riders in the Tour. It's, uh, it's his first Grand Tour, and he was called at the last minute, so it, well, it's, not, well, it's, not, well, it's kind of normal that you can't pronounce his name. Well, give us a... How, how does one pronounce Mathieu, it? Mathieu Bourgodeau. Bourgodeau, OK. Alexis Viermoz mm -hmm. of Viermo. 82R was yeah. in there as well. <laughs> Tish Benut of Sunweb and Quentin Pache of <coughs> B&B &B Hotels. And, uh, well, they got quite a way up the road. And it was really fairly formulaic until the latter stages. Tish Benut crashed on a descent and was basically ruled out of the break and then Nylance went away on his own and was eventually reeled in and then as I say Wout van Aert put in his big turn Roglic got the time bonus of 10 seconds which meant uh, that he's moved up the overall standings into third place he's now only seven behind Julian Alaphilippe who keeps the yellow jersey the riders who lost a little bit of ground today uh, Emmanuel Buchmann and Enric Mas were nine seconds behind the main group of favourites. Alejandro Valverde was 21 seconds down. Richard Carapaz was 28 seconds down. A little bit of a surprise there for Ineos Grenadiers because, Richard, you were tipping him to feature in the shake-up for the stage win well, today, possibly. Yeah, I mean, I think also when we previewed the, the tour, we looked at the selection of Carapaz as being a giving them options in the early part of the race and in fact I did an interview with Dave Brailsford last week we heard a bit of it last night and he said exactly that that they were looking for a blend of Bernal who, who we know will come good in the final week and Carapaz who's more explosive he's fast and I would have thought he'd have been up there on a stage like today I'm not sure what the value would have been for them and him winning but I you know my, my impression and it was confirmed by Brailsford was that they were picking a team for the two halves of the race Carapaz almost for the first half Bernal for the second half so I was surprised 
uh, that, Bern- that, that Carapaz wasn't up there. Danny Martinez and Sergio Iguita of EF Pro Cycling also lost a bit of time. They were in the Carapaz group at 28 seconds. Mark Hershey, who had been mm-hmm. second this morning, lost 38 seconds, so he slips down. And that group of GC riders at 17 seconds off the pace yesterday was around 30-odd, I think. That's roughly been cut in half. So we're starting to shape the GC picture a little bit. Uh, Peter Sagan is still in the green jersey, but Sam Bennett has drawn level on points thanks to uh, the intermediate sprint points today. Uh, Pogachar is in the white jersey, having moved up himself overall. And Benoit Cousnefoy is still in the it's King very, of the Mountains very jersey. Good there at well, Benoit Cousnefoy. Cousnefoy. Well, we had somebody ask him on Twitter how to pronounce uh, his surname, whether the S is, uh, is, pr- is, is said or, or skipped over. Yeah, uh, well it's, it's funny. L- l- last year, uh, everybody was calling him Connefroy, and, and now everybody is calling him Cosnefroy, and, and I think it's from instructions from himself that it's, uh, you know, well, Connefroy, for s- reasons that the French uh, speakers will understand, sounds uh, a little bit odd, so Cosnefroy is much better. It would sound very rude, I gather. Well, but I mean, of, I don't know yeah, the I don't know of. the bad words. Um, <laughs> but yeah, James Bothamley was asking um, how you know whether I've got the pronunciation right there. I mean, almost certainly not. Sometimes, but sometimes I get pretty close. But that's how we say it in Watford. <laughs> not Watford. I, I haven't thought about that because we'll me- you mentioned in the Benoit Costnefroy. If we stick to the, the snobbish way of uh, you know pronouncing. Uh, as, as, well, for, foreign names. You should you should never say AG to our La Mondiale because it's a French company. So you should call them AG de Zer La Mondiale, right? Let's well, if we stick Why to. Let's not go there, Francois. That's a, that's I mean, a, that's there's, a thorny there's, debate. there's worms, can of worms all over the table now, Francois. You are listening to the Cycling Podcast, brought to you by Iwoka. Flexible loans built for small businesses. Join 50,000 customers taking on life's twists and turns and scaling new height with iWoka. If you run a small business, find out more at iwoka.co.uk. I-W-O-C-A dot co dot uk. Thank you very much to iWoka for sponsoring the cycling podcast and helping us as a small business to be here in Orsier Merlet covering the Tour de France. It's been an incredible year for iWaka, helping lots of small businesses that have had their uh, activity interrupted by coronavirus. And uh, iWaka were accredited by the British Business Bank to grant coronavirus business interruption loans, Sybils, which is money basically to try and help small businesses stay on their feet uh, during a very difficult period. I think small businesses have probably been disproportionately affected by coronavirus and the money that's been made available by iWaka has helped them weather the storm and hopefully look forward to better days. iWaka also sponsor the Kendall Cycle Club so hopefully all of the members are watching the Tour de France and enjoying it and listening to the cycling podcast of course up there in the Lake District so thank you very much Iwaka there might be more people on the roadside in the Lake District at right now than in some sections of the Tour actually yeah but well that's <laughs> yeah um, just, just on that, I mean, we, we should be a little careful. It, it, we're not kind of downplaying, but the Tour de France is normally like the Olympic mm-hmm. Games that moves around every day, thousands of people all over the place. And it is, it's discombobulating that it's so quiet. There's other but little things as well. Somebody tweeted, Stan Meir tweeted, during the podcast, here, Richard said he wondered whether it feels like the Tour to viewers at home. Watching the past few days, it's felt like the light is all wrong. The shadows are Vuelta shadows, not Tour shadows. I thought that was a very interesting observation because that that's one of the little things that's just kind of altered the texture of the race. You know, the, there's the atmosphere, there's the crowds, there's the, the scale of it. Some of it is very familiar. You know, we all walked through the zone technique today and it's the same incredible kind of setup, the cables, Miles yeah, but miles few, fewer people. I talked to people, yeah. talked to Philippe Sud on the phone the, uh, uh, as we were having lunch in in Gap, which is a new thing as well. We have, we kind of have time to have lunch, but like it, it, it seems to me a little bit like the tour 
of the of the eighties. You know, I'm unfortunately old enough to have been there in the eighties, and, and that, that's the way we covered the tour in the in the old days. And um, and Philippe Surtso, who is the head of communication for ASO, told me that the the, the uh, journalists and and TV attendances here were forty percent down on pre on you know normal years. So you 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 have fewer people even in the zone technique. And as we found out as well, and once again, it's not a judgment at all. That's just a, you know a, a state of fact. Uh, when we were you know, driving up or towards Yamerlet, well, the 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 the, the, the age, uh, the average uh, of the, the the spectators on the roadside is is pretty higher than usual because probably I mean you know kids are back at school, their parents are back at work, so well most of the the, the guys and you know we see on the on the roadside are. Probably pensioners. It's a saga, Tour de France, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Lionel, that was your well, suggestion. I, yeah, I mean, not, yeah, yeah, not, not in a, any sort of dismissive mm, way. No. I mean, but no. it was it was striking, wasn't it? That um, it was a very different, um, very different demographic out there on the roadside, and, and a smaller crowd. But when you when it all comes down to it, it's still the Tour de France. The Tour is still the Tour, and Tour's when tour. you see. When you see, I think that's the first one of, of the race, <laughs> and we're four days in. Well, it's uh, like, like the tour is not the tour. <laughs> <laughs> that could be uh, tried this tour because it's it's there's so much about it that's unfamiliar. But as far as the riders are concerned, you know, they're the the racing is uh, completely unaffected, really. I mean, you you look at you look at the stage finish today, and you just see Jumbo Visma, a team that are absolutely on it. I mean, that the, pretty much every thing they did was was right maybe as i said in the uh, tale of the attack when uh, Wout van Aert peeled off Sepkus wasn't on his wheel he was just in front of Primoz Roglic so was that a small mistake or you know because Kus then powered up to the front and then Roglic had to close the gap i'm not suggesting that was any kind of problem for Roglic he did it very easily but ideally you'd want everybody in the line but Ineos uh, although overall they looked like they were marching out of time today um, they had a couple of riders in there kind of interrupting the Jumbo Visma train so this kind of battle for supremacy is going to be interesting. If you look further down in the GC I mean you you, you already have in, in the, the top 15 is, is, is probably going, going to be not far from what the, the, the final top 15 might be with, 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 with larger gaps of course but you have Nairo Quintana there Thibaut, Thibaut Pino is there uh, Julien Lafilippe was fifth in the stage so he's still there uh, um, well Lopez who crashed on on the first day is there as well. Uh, well, it got burned out a little bit isolated, maybe for, you know from uh, previous years, but is there as well. So, so if if you, if you look at the top ten, maybe except Guillaume Martin who might be the new uh, you know the new kid in the in the block. Well, we'll get we'll get on to him. I mean, uh, on Bernal, he's running exactly the same as as last year. You know, the La Planche de Belfi and in the Pyrenees last year, he he looked like he didn't really have the legs, and um, so. I don't think we write Bernal off at all. Oh no, I'm not writing him off. I'm, I'm saying in the in the leading group, except from Roglic who won. Mm. Uh, I mean, they're, they're all there, you know. There, there were a little bit of doubts about Quintana being le less strong than he was, but he's is there in, he in fourth well, place. He, today, yeah. yeah. Uh, Just on Roglic, um, Chris Baldwin, who you might remember, the press officer at Astana for several years, um, quite a quirky chap. Um, he tweeted something, caught my eye, and made me chuckle. Everything about Roglic is terrific except that giant forearm cross tattoo. It looks like something a serial killer would chop off and keep preserved in a formaldehyde jar over his bed while mismatched detectives Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman tried to chase down leads. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> wow. Uh, interesting observation there from uh, Chris Baldwin. But, but Roglic, I mean, it, as I said earlier, it looked to me like he was almost holding back and, and almost a reluctant stage winner in a way. It, in the end, it was... I might as well do this. That's mm. what it looked like, mm. and, and I think that. I know, think that, I think he doesn't want the yellow jersey. I mean, he, he yeah. said in the press conference he was sorry not to, you know, that it was only a stage and not the the yellow jersey. But well, let's face it. I'm pretty sure it's it's, it's the best possible out, outcome for uh, Roglic and Jumbo Visma. Ala Philippe keeps the jersey. Quick step will keep working. The French public or what's left of it will be happy uh, and you know and he, he really went for, for the for the stage win because if we doubt it for a minute because of his crash at 
the Dauphiné, that he was in his in his best shape here. He was the the, the, the leading favourite. There were little hints of doubts, and I I think that at least in this early uh, bit of the Tour de France, uh, well, Roglic is more than ever the the the, the number one favourite, undoubtedly. And Slovenia are the oh, number yeah. one nation at the moment because uh, although Roglic might not be in yellow, he is uh, the, the the stage winner today. He's up to third. Tadej Pogacar was second on the stage yeah, today. He's up the to fourth. first time for on the tour for Slovenia. And uh, and well, the the two of them were on the podium in the Vuelta last year, weren't they? Of course, Roglic won the race. Pogacar won three stages and. Earlier in the year, well, my last foreign trip before the Tour de France was a trip to Slovenia, primarily to interview Jane Brakovic for a Friends of the Podcast episode. But I kind of found out quite a lot about Slovenian cycling and, and just uh, uh, the sporting culture in Slovenia. And we all know Roglic is a ski jumper. You're a big... What? <laughs> you're a big <laughs> alpine sportsman, mm -hmm. uh, Francois. But Roglic, yeah, this, he was a ski jumper, Richard. Are you kidding me? No. And then he had a terrible crash, and then he gave up ski jumping. Part of his recovery was cycling, and he became you know, very good at cycling. And wow, initially, uh, story. he str <laughs> initially struggled to find you, you, a you team. You probably thought the ski jumper was a garment you put in the, when you go skiing, but it's not. <laughs> but in contrast, Pogacar really showed his talent very young. Uh, Richard, I think you talked on the podcast last year after a conversation with Andre Hauptmann, the Slovenian national coach and also part of the setup at UAE Team Emirates, that Pogacar was a, a child prodigy, really. He was riding uh, junior races as, a, as a, either a 12 or 13-year-old, yeah. a very young teen anyway, and he was riding with, with people much older than him. And Hauptmann went to watch one of these races and saw this little kid going round you know, on his own and thought, well, why not pull him out of the race? I mean, he's just getting demoralised here. And somebody pointed out that, no, he's not... He's just about to lap them. He's just about to lap the rest of the field, and the rest of the field are two, three years older. He's good at cycling, isn't he, old, old Pog? He's looked really good. I mean, really on it every single stage, and sharp, and maybe so much with, with him, but with Roglic in particular, you, the, the one fear is the three weeks, you know? Um, it's a long time to sustain that. I think we all think back to the, the Giro last year. Maybe that's a mistake, because I'm sure he learned a lot from that. Um but he's in such red hot form and you have got this threat of you know Bernal the, what happened last year where Bernal did just seem to get well it wasn't that he got stronger everybody else got weaker and Bernal was just the same and that could well happen again and you know Quintana's another one he rode really well today you know that was a really strong performance from him to beat Alaphilippe in a sprint at the top of a mountain like that that's mm. quite quite impressive and also Maybe quite telling about Alaphilippe as well, that, as I've said many times, I don't think he's quite the same rider that no, he was last year. No, no. For Quintana, yeah, quite the opposite. I, I find that since he left Movistar, he, he kind of, even if he's, if he's in a weaker team, I, I talked to, to his uh, team director, Yvon Le Danois, uh, yesterday on the phone, who told me, well, actually, he, he feels that probably Quintana feels more at ease uh, with Alka Samsi because he's the undisputed leader. Whereas in the in, with Movistar, he always had to compose with either Valverde, Landau, whoever was in the in the cards, you know, for Movistar at the time. So he, he said that really the, the the merging, the kind of you know little magical alchemy they're trying to build with a French uh, team and with three Colombians in there, it's it's taking. It's uh, it's you know, and and in the same time. Quintana kind of extended his range, like you know, like he did in the Vuelta already last season. Like, like now he attacks from afar. His prince, he even attacks in flat stages. He, he, he seems to be more versatile rider than he used to be, and still, uh, you know, a, a force to, to take into account in the mountains, obviously. Shoot, shoot at the du peloton. Cycling podcast team car at the back of the pack, please. That's Seb PK, the voice of Radio Tour, reminding me to tell you that our Tour de France coverage is sponsored by the next generation Watt Bike Atom. Lionel, before the Tour, you put the new Watt Bike through its paces, or did it put you through your paces? 
Well, a bit of both really, Richard, I suppose. I'm not sure who came out on top, to be honest. I'm here to tell the tale. So, you know, I survived a few hard sessions and uh, I was keen to test out this new electromagnetic resistance system, which has been borrowed from the Atom X, which is the commercial model of what bike that you'd see in gyms. Now, by switching from a motor-driven magnetic system to the electromagnetic resistance system, it basically means there are fewer moving parts, which means that gear changes are quicker and and the ride is even smoother uh, by passing an electric current through coils to resist the movement of the flywheel. Well, that's basically how it works. I mean, to be honest, I, I'm, this technology is beyond me, my simple brain. I don't really need to know how it works. I need to know if it works. So I'm just warming down now, but I've been riding on one of the London courses on Zwift and I've done a couple of different things just to, first of all, get used to the manual gear changes. I rode around one of the circuits, which has got a slight rise on it. So a couple of laps I'd go around in a small gear at a higher cadence and then I'd switch it up and uh, drop down the gears, make it feel a bit like I'm on the big ring and, and powered up the climb instead. And after a few laps it just becomes instinctive you know when you're changing up when you're changing down and you're not really thinking about what it is you're doing it just becomes automatic just like um, changing gear on a bike when you're outdoors you know if you're coming into the bottom of the climb you you want to be in a lower gear you don't want to have to um, change gear as the gradient is changing and, and you feel that resistance change come on quite smoothly so um, yeah it's a nice realistic feel just like riding a bike outdoors and then I picked one of Zwift's training programs which had a couple of intervals in it and I let the ergo take over which means that the resistance changes happen for me and it reacts uh, quickly but not too quickly the power comes on or the resistance comes on smoothly and um, so you're not fumbling around trying to get into the right gear when what you're supposed to be doing is concentrating on increasing the power and holding that power for the interval and then and the resistance just drops off nicely at the end of uh, that particular interval and, and uh, you can get back into your recovery mode for a few minutes. The next generation Watt Bike Atom is now available to buy from £90 per month. See wattbike.com, that's W-A-T-T-B-I-K-E dot com for details. Well, Anna, I don't know if the uh, music's being pumped up, is it? Unfortunately, um, we just missed... While we weren't recording there, there was a bit of James Brown, and I thought that would be a perfect opportunity for you to do your James Brown impression once again, which I think, I think you've entertained the listeners with before. I have. I think you'd have to go back and through the listen archives. through the archive to find it. I'm not doing it again. It's very hit and miss, my James Brown impression. Sometimes it comes out really well, sometimes it doesn't. How, how did James Brown go through life like that? <laughs> 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 Only getting James Brown authentically correct on some occasions. Difficult. Francois is sitting there. I guarantee he'll have a James Brown story. He, Absolutely. He, his band opened for James Brown no, 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 I don't in have, I Geneva don't have, I, actually, in 1979. No, I actually don't have, I actually don't have many uh, James Brown stories. I've, I've seen him a couple of times. Alive. I also see Bobby Bird, who was, who was who, the guy who was actually arranging his stuff uh, live a couple of times. But I uh, no, I don't have great James Brown stories. In, unfortunately, what does any what does any of that have to do with Guillaume Martin? Um, who we were going to turn well, our attention to. nothing at all, I guess. Because you spoke to his Cofidis team manager, Cedric Vasseur, at the finish, Francois. I mean, Guillaume Martin rode really well at the Dauphiné recently, and I think today was a real test of form, wasn't it? Just pure form. And and Martin is obviously has carried that form into this race, um, and he looks great. And he it, it was you know good on him for having a go. Um but he's always been a quite an aggressive rider, and he seems to be backing that up with. He's not just attacking; he can he can sustain it. As you say, I, I, I talked to Cedric Vasseur, uh, you know, Cofidis team manager. Oddly enough, you know, moving to Cofidis, which in the past was seen as the graveyard. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, the, the 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 you know the wrongest move you could make. Uh, seems to have been. Um, really, uh, you know, change in his career. I mean, he's always been, a, 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 you know, very promising rider, very talented rider, but you had the impression he, he was kind of, you know, dwindling a, 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 a around the top 20, 25 uh, spots and, and unable to, to go, you know, a, a little bit higher. And since the Dauphiné, but even all season, is you, you can tell he's gone a step higher 
higher. That, that's what Cedric Vassar is telling me, uh, actually. But, you know, you, you, you can feel he's more confident. He's got more experience. He attacks at, at, at the right time. And, and also, he, he dares attack uh, the Roglic, you know, Roglic and the Jumbo Vismas. And, and, and you can, well, probably, maybe it was, in a way, the... the, 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 the um, Maybe the lost kid of French cycling would be too much, but he, he was always seen a little bit, bit, bit uh, you know, below uh, Thibaut Pinot or Romain Bardet. By the look of what we've seen so far this season, what we've seen in this tour is above Thibaut Pinot in the in a day stage, and 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 it seems to me to 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 be in in better form and 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 maybe to have at least as much potential as Romain Bardet on this tour. Cedric, uh, well, a great performance with by Guillaume. I mean, we, we could see he was in top shape since the start of the tour, but today, really impressive. Yeah, Guillaume, since several days, he wanted to, to go on the attack, so we had to wait for the, um, for the mountains. Today was an uphill finish, and in fact, it was not really steep enough for, for making differences, but we saw that in the last days, Guillaume was in a, a really good shape. And I think for the confidence, what he did today is really impressive. Of course, he didn't win the stage, but the tour is still long, and he showed again today that he's maybe one of the best riders in this Tour de France. We saw that he's, he's gone a step further from, from last year, for instance. He's, he looks more confident, stronger. What changed? Yeah, he looks stronger. He looks more quiet also, because in the past he was attacking at 7 10 10k from the finish. We, we, we did a lot of work to help him to be more quiet in the race. We also put a lot of riders around him to protect him, that he could be very um, strong in the last uh, uphill. And I think from uh, what he showed now, all the teams will be uh, behind uh, Guillaume. He's uh, our leader and our only leader for, for this sort of France. So it's now Guillaume against Slovenia? <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. Uh, you know, the tour is still long. Uh, this is just a little mountain in, in this Tour de France and uh, the big mountains are coming. Mont Aigual in two days. We will have the Pyrenees, we will have the, the Alpes. But uh, some, I, I don't know, I, I have something like uh, Guillaume is going to make a very great Tour de France. He showed in the last two years that he was in a, in a constant progression. 20, 21, two years ago, 12 last year. So now the focus is to win a stage, of course. And I'm sure Guillaume is able to come in the first 10 of the Tour de France. The Cycling Podcast is supported by Science in Sport. Science in Sport, fueled by science. Thank you very much to Science in Sport for supporting the Cycling Podcast. Uh, You can get 25% off with the code SISCP25. At the checkout, that's at scienceandsport.com. Um, you can, if you want to be a cycling podcast completist, you can be, you can be doing Zwift on your Watt bike while consuming your Science and Sport products. The Turbo Plus range designed for indoors, although it's also good in hot temperatures as well with the menthol. While wearing your cycling podcast Katusha jersey. I forgot that. We uh, released episode two of Kilometer Zero today, sponsored by Zwift. A very striking slide, a picture of Pavel Sivakov after his crashes. He's one of nine riders keeping audio diaries for us. He's been the most prolific in sending audio in. Um, He's been fantastic. And I think at the end of this tour, we're going to have an incredible body of work from all these riders. We're not releasing it all at the moment, but we will at the end of the tour. And it will feature in Kilometer Zeros. But there was a great bit of product placement as well in the picture of Sivakov because there was a, a science of sport gel hanging out of the back pocket. Not deliberate, accidental, but there you go. Um, I, I know what you're thinking, Lionel. You're thinking, how many science of sport products did Richard use today on his 65-kilometre <laughs> ride wow. from Cisteron to Gap? I was impressed by your ride this morning. What was it, 68 kilometres in the end? 65. 65 kilometres. Yeah, well done. Oh, fair old lick as well, I can tell you. Yeah. Um, I we felt like I could probably be riding the tour. <laughs> well, to be honest, I was a little bit worried when you left this morning, Richard, because you couldn't find cold days on, on day one. So yeah, I, I, I was thinking you might end up in Briançon. A yeah. different gap. It's, it's another gap somewhere. Or a, yeah, <laughs> a, at a branch of the clothing store gap somewhere <laughs> in Avignon. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in... Just, uh, 
just we'd find you just huddled in a corner covered in pastel jumpers <laughs> <laughs> anyway just to go back to the previous uh, discussion about Guillaume Martin I mean he's been the, the the kind of form guy since lockdown eased and racing resumed third in the Dauphiné mm -hmm. and third on Mont Ventoux in the uh, in the one day race and his Tour de France progression has got a kind of nice symmetry to it 23rd three years ago 21st two years ago and then 12th mm -hmm. last year all for Wanty Group Gobert of course and now he's moved across to Cofidis and well what would what would be a good result? I mean, uh, cracking the top ten as Vasser as Vassar said, yeah, I, 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 you know, I think he can probably he, on the form he's got. I, I think it's, it, there are two things. He's on great form, but I also think he's, he's gone up. You know, a step in the ladder is 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 is, is the change of team. Obviously, you know, uh, probably uh, Guillaume Martin was not uh, once he go, uh, group Gobert's number one priority. With Cofidis kind of beefing up its its squad in the last uh, you know couple of months, uh, thanks to Vasser and the new team, uh, is it, is is getting there. And 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 it seems to me that uh, uh, Roman Bardet, at least with AG to rise, is, is maybe you know uh, declining a little bit. Warren Bargill is is obviously had been declining since you know for the past two years, or maybe maybe they'll be back to the, their best shape soon. But and and Guillaume Martin is probably the guy you know in the in the in this French generation. He's a little bit younger, who's, who's, who's coming of age. And, well, let's, let's watch for him on this tour. He might be the, the, the big and the good surprise. But there are guys here who are ostensibly here for Sage wins. Adam Yates is another one, um, who's still up there overall. And that sort of deprives him of, um, of, um, him of some opportunities. And I suppose Guillaume Martin, with, with the jump he's got, you know, he could target Sage wins, but he's less likely to win a stage when he's, he's highly placed overall as he is at the moment he's up to fifth overall tonight um, and Simon Geshka one of our diarists spoke sent us in uh, a dispatch tonight didn't he talking about the the unusual nature of this year's route with this mountain top finish so early in the race yeah having a mountain top finish so early uh, in the tour changes uh, the tactics a little bit I think in the past many teams and uh, also many leaders were trying to hide themselves a little bit in the first week, uh, not showing too much uh, of their shape, maybe even uh, riding themselves a bit into top shape still, um, which is hard to time perfectly. But uh, the tour or every grand tour with three weeks, it's a long time. And uh, sometimes me personally, sometimes I feel not so great in the first week, but then in the second and third week, uh, I get yeah by feeling better and better. And uh, I think that's also what many, uh, many leaders uh, like. But having hard stages already in the first tour changes that a little bit. You cannot afford to lose any time ever as a GC contender. And uh, today was, was a day to put the cards on the table, I would say. It also changes the way in terms of trying to understate things. For example, Roglic now, after his crash in Dauphiné, he said uh, he will see if he's fit enough. They were doubting uh, if he can start the tour at all. And uh, now he won already the fourth stage. So uh, I think that was also a bit playing by the team and by him. I think he was uh, definitely good enough to start the tour in the first place. And uh, now he showed that he recovered well enough from his crash. Much as I hate to say it, Simon Geschke backs up something that you were saying earlier, Richard, about how... You know, Roglic was almost a reluctant winner. I mean, he obviously tried to win the stage once he was up there, but you know, doesn't want to necessarily show all of his cards too early in the tour. But we were talking about this yesterday as well, about how last year we got to those alpine stages which were curtailed by the hailstorms and the bad weather, and there was that overriding sense of missed opportunity for some of the GC riders. So with today's stage and Mont Egual on Thursday, you know, there are little opportunities here. And I, I can't see Roglic, especially with the strength of Jumbo Visma behind him, I can't see him turning down the opportunity to take the yellow jersey on Thursday if it presents itself, especially as Alaphilippe looks a little bit off in terms of the... And he has such a strong team, exactly. Roglic. You know, there's, if, if you're going to have the yellow jersey, that, that was a problem Alaphilippe had 
today, didn't he? He had one one teammate in the end, and he looks a little bit isolated. But, but this is the sort of climbs that that suit Alaphilippe, Philippe, you know. So uh, it today he probably gave. Obviously, I'm saying this, and it, it'll be denied by facts, but it, it, it's probably the, the you know the, the, the probably the last mountain stage stages of this kind. I mean that that as Cyril Guimard said, it, it it is you know. I think the first category uh, it got from the organizers come more from history and Bernard Tevni. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and Luisa Kania, then you know, uh, yeah. then then to to the, the real difficulty of the of the. And this is the kind of very rolling climbs that that Alaphilippe is very uh, you know at ease with. I, I don't think he lose lots of time in Monteguar either. But but then you know gradually, obviously the the, the the real you know climbers and the real contenders will take over. And uh, it, like it was last year, I think Alaphilippe was pretty clear in his first interviews about the fact that he's not again going for the GC. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're, it's, 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 it's part of, you know, all the fancies we can have of, or is you know, Alaphilippe being a GC contender? No, and, 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 and pretty soon... The, the, the 2019 Alaphilippe would have won today, though, wouldn't he, from that group? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, he would have. And, and, and probably the same will soon apply to Art Van Aert. You, you can't hide the classics rider behind the, the, the temporary GC. For this kind of, of guys, it really depends on the form. I, I don't think it applies to Guillaume Martin, who, 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 who in my opinion, is in, in the next couple of years or next three or four years, will be a GC contender. I mean, a top 10 GC contender, like, you know, like on, in the mold of Pauke Molema or that, 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 that type of rider. Yeah, on this thing of who's going for the GC and who isn't, I'm, I'm, I never trust anyone who says they're going for stages until they've lost five minutes because it's patently not true. You, you do see riders toss away well, it takes an overall enormous position. Discipline. Uh, Simon Yates did it last year mm, quite deliberately. Course, yeah. Yeah. But it takes discipline. And he is one of these guys who, who is very single-minded. And, and I think it's very hard to... If you're in Adam Yates' position now, you know up there overall, yeah, it's to, to uh, let go. No, so, so, so far Adam Yates, Adam, and, and like Simon uh, has done it the, the wrong way. I mean, in terms of uh, going for stage wins, I mean Warren Bargill did the same two years ago. Uh, you know, going for stage wins and for the polka dot. And if you you want to do that, you have to lose to to to, to intentionally lose uh, time early in the race. Well, especially Mitchelton Scott, Adam Yates second overall at the moment, and without any fuss whatsoever, Esteban Chavez is eighth in that group of riders at 17 seconds and there's already a bit of a shake up and a sort out on the overall and some patterns are emerging obviously the two Slovenians are in there Roglic and Pogacar and then there's four Colombians in the top mm. ten as well today Bernal of course Chavez Quintana and Lopez today mm. was just basically a replay of the Slovenian National Road Race Championship wasn't it <laughs> it was now a little bit of trivia from our Slovenian colleague Tony Gruden. Do you remember when we talked about Slovenia back in the spring before the whole lockdown and everything and Daniel said that the outline of the country looked like a, what was it he said? He said it looked like an east facing pigeon. I put this to Tony Gruden who works for the national broadcaster covering cycling and he said that actually the Slovenians consider the outline of the country to be more like a chicken and it's something that they're very proud of and in fact before Google Slovenia's first internet search engine or portal into the world wide web i guess their equivalent of ask jeeves was called matt kurja or mother hen this is mean, extraordinary lionel what it's trivia this is, you know huh? um, knowledge you're so uh, <laughs> will um, will uh, pogachar and roglic be counting their chickens oh, or i see um, yeah. you know, i see what you did uh, um, that's excellent <laughs> i don't think they'll <laughs> count their chickens no i think uh, Roglic is, is throttling back and Pogacar is just... Well, we don't know with him. We don't know because at the Vuelta last year, you know, he got stronger as the race went on. And I don't think he knows his limits or his capabilities either. You know, we speak to Jeroen Swart a bit, who's this doctor, the head of medicine at um, UA Team Emirates. And, you know, he, he, he thinks that anything is possible for Pogacar. And, and, you know, he could be the guy here. He's... He started this race without putting him really a foot wrong and has looked really, he's, he's looked sharp and he's been up there every day. I think the, the problem, the strategic, the, the tactical problem for, in the, the, for the rest of the tour, the only team that, that that's actually, well, the, the tour of, of, you know, yesteryears uh, was, ba is, has most of the time been based on teamwork, you know, and the strongest team manages to get the, the, the stronger 
the strongest guy in the team, you know, to to win the tour. The only team that seems in position to do that, Jumbo Visma. It, it would take an exceptional individual talent to, you know, tackle the Jumbo Visma and to beat them at their own game. Because if, even if Roglic had problem, okay, Dumoulin lost a little bit of time today, but he's still there. So I don't know. I mean, if, if Pogacar wins the tour, or if Bernal wins the tour like he did last year. Uh, I can't think of anybody else, to be honest. These guys would be really, you know, extraordinary because they, I'm not saying they would do it on their own. The team would do their work, you know, but they, they, they don't have a team to lead the way, yeah, to control true. the race like Jumbo Visma are doing. So we'll see. Just to clap, I mean, Dumoulin was in that group. He didn't, <coughs> he was, you know, he was solidly in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that Roglic Dumoulin tandem, it could he, be he, something that yeah, he really was becomes. Yeah, he was beat at the finish saying that he just didn't feel that he was at the level to compete at the front of that group mm. I think it was everybody said it was really fast you know it was a really fast ascent of the, the climb helped I think by the smooth road Wat Van Aert well, let's Sepp face Kuss. it it's not Tom, Tom Dumoulin's role I, even if it's, it had been assigned by the team to do his part of the job why should he? Indeed well, tomorrow we start to sort of head west, don't we? Mm, in this we go to Priva. Tour de France. Yeah, Priva, not Privas. In case and uh, you, you know, in a few days we're in the Pyrenees, aren't we? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very... We hop, it, skip and a jump and we'll be in the Pyrenees. It's funny because we, we probably didn't realise in October when the, when the, the tour uh, route was announced that it, it was such a strange tour and, and such an awkward, you know, go, going uh, kind of... You know, it's like snake and ladders in a way. You know, you're going up and down and uh, up again, and, uh, or, and I like going around a U-bend in a toilet <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh goodness me! But, but the other <laughs> way, yeah, <laughs> defying gravity, coming back into the toilet bowl <laughs> at the end. I mean, it's kind of like that. Which, um, but anyway, um, tomorrow what we get? What are we looking forward yeah, to? Yeah, well, uh, Priva. I mean, Priva has never been. Uh, th- th- there's been a, st- a tour stage in the past, but it's, it's uh, it was a start, I think. Uh, and there's never been a finish there. It's a, it's, there's a funny thing about Priva. It's the only prefecture, capital of the department, uh, in France without a railway station. So if you were planning to get and see the tour on train, but you, you Did they, was that your man? Wow. What was his Dr. name? Dr. Beeching <laughs> already Dr. Beeching. done his, done his <laughs> work there. So but no, no lead out train for think, the sprint yeah, I don't think there ever was Priva. a railway station in Priva, actually. <laughs> so there you are. What about trams? Uh, <laughs> Do you have trams? <laughs> there, there, there was, I don't think, well, they might have, have had a tram. It's in Ardèche. It's the capital of Ardèche, actually. So, I mean, Tour de l'Ardèche. I mean, w- women's, you know, uh, women cyclists know very well about Tour de l'Ardèche. I think Marion Voss uh, won a, was staged last year in Priva. Uh, and the, the last man, uh, I think, well, there was a, there was a, a couple of races, but there was uh, the Dauphiné one there a couple of times. And uh, as far as I remember, I think, in uh, well, 11 years ago, uh, a promising rider won. Well, it was, even at the time, it's not promising anymore. But Alan Alejandro Valverde won a stage there in Priva. So it might not be. It, lots of people say it might be a sprint finish, but if Valverde won in, in that place, it's quite hilly uh, um, around Priva. So maybe more a stage for a. Uh, well, maybe not Valverde, but, a, but I don't know, Julian Lafilippe. <laughs> not Sam Bennett. Mm. But, I haven't, seen, to be honest, I haven't seen the last stretch. But yeah, in, in the team, uh, if, if they go for it, they'll, they'll probably try to, to, to set up uh, Sam Bennett to win it. Well, we'll see tomorrow, won't we, in Priva? You mentioned Marina Voss and women's cycling, and tomorrow's Comet to Zero is a bit of La Course from Saturday and a bit of looking ahead to this uh, week long stage race that ASO are going to launch in 2022 to start on the final day of the Tour de France which uh, we'll, we'll hear in this episode from Lizzie Banks um, who kept a sort of a, a sort of audio diary for us before and after La Course and we'll hear from a couple of other riders as well who, one of whom has rode the route of the Tour de France a, he- a month ahead of the men this time, not a day ahead as they normally do, the Donon Desel, uh, Ovelo and uh, yeah, they, they complete the course. So she had some interesting things to say about the the course and the stages to look out for as well. So that's coming tomorrow, uh, supported by Zwift. And uh, we'll be coming to you tomorrow from Priva, tomorrow evening, and look forward to that. Well, will there be a disco in Priva? I'm... I'm um, or maybe this has really taken off now, and we should go and we can jo- go and join in down You're the front. You're dying <laughs> to join it. I can see yeah, my you, dancing you. shoes on. 
you, you're still a young, you're still, yeah, you're still a young man at heart, like the Pichun, you know, or in uh, in in our press caravan. We spoke to the Pichun today, um, and we'll be hearing from them in a future episode. We are supporting them through the sale of Stacy Snyder's cups and mugs, and the second batch is being made as we speak, and they will go on sale soon. We'll have details for you. We should wrap it up there and we order should. dessert. Thank you, Lionel. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Francois. Merci. Merci.